lot of numbers get thrown around these days and, and not all of it is um, uh, is useful but i've tried to extract some of the most useful data points for us to get in one snapshot a view of what exactly this world is right what is ai what is machine learning why is it such a big deal why are people talking about it uh, why are enterprises taking it seriously why are companies investing a lot of money into it let's take a look at this snapshot right up on the screen you see 12 tiles and i'm just going to quickly walk through some of the information embedded in these 12 tiles right the first two tiles talk a little bit about the size and the, and the velocity of this market already people are talking about ai being you know 30 40 billion and and 58 billion in 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 spend in total expenditure in this particular area by the year 2021 which incidentally is not that far away it's about 3 years away from now so we're talking about you know a nearly 60 billion market 3 years from now but it's not just that it's a big market there are a lot of big technology related markets this is also an incredibly fast growing market at the annual growth rate of, of AI spend is estimated at about 50% year on year, which is mind, mind boggling if you think about it. Now, of all of this spend, just enterprise AI revenues are expected to reach up to 31 billion by the year 2025. Now, it's not a surprise when you take these first three tiles in, into view that you, know, that you see this number 84% of, of all companies investing in AI. And it's not surprising when, when you have a, a large fast growing market with a significant enterprise impact where companies are going to be impacted, where they're going to see a lot of value out of this. Guess what? Everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon. But why is now the right time? Why is now the inflection point in this kind of a market right? or in this kind of an industry? The next two tiles in, in row number two are really indicative of what's going on here. In fact, this entire second row is indicative of what's going on in the market. Right? Why is this such a big deal and why is now the right time? Now, if you think about it, in the year 2010, which is not that far ago, right? the error rate for image labeling, automated image labeling for a, for a machine algorithm to, to start to label images was at about 28.5%. So we're talking about a machine being able to look at, at a series of images and, and being right you know, about 70% of the time, which is not bad, but not quite human level and we're a lot more capable than that for when, when we look at an average set of images but just a few years later that error rate is at 2.5 percent now that's a fascinating leap because now we're talking about a machine being right nearly 98 percent of the time that it looks at a series of images now that is not just human level in some domains that's actually beyond human level and that's why it starts it starts to become important and this it starts to become relevant to the industry Combine that with the fact that you know AI has gone from being in the research rooms and research centers to being in you know in organizations that could actually afford um, you know high-powered systems and 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 high levels of computing to now digital assistants being in in everybody's house. The you know the estimate is that there'll be seven billion AI-powered digital assistants in the world by the year 2020, which is again not that far off, and we're talking about you know, nearly one for one per person, right? Now, obviously that, that it's not going to be evenly distributed, but that is still a mind boggling number. And, and another indicator of what's enabling all of this, that what's enabled this, this quantum leap from, you know, a 70% success rate while labeling images to nearly 98%, it's computing power. You have what are called GPUs, which are replacing what traditionally we think of as the, as the computing horsepower behind a, behind a computer. It's, the, it's replacing the CPUs. Now, the number of cores in in Nvidia um, in Nvidia's top you know kind of top tier GPU is 3,584 cores. Now your average laptop has about you know maybe two cores, maybe four, maybe eight cores. Right? Um, and and the, I, I believe that the top Intel chip has something of the order of 20 to 30 cores. But we're talking about a GPU which is replacing the, the traditional CPU as the computing unit, having 3,584 cores, which means it, it can run 3,584 parallel processes. Uh, you know, and, and that is, in, is, is again, you know, if you think about that kind of a number being compounded, right, it, it's a startlingly high number. And that's enabling computing as a whole to evolve and, and artificial intelligence as a field to start to harness some of this energy and the computing power. Now, what has all of that led to? It's led to a lot of interest. It's led to a lot of buzz. AI startups in the United States since the year 2000 
have gone up 14 fold at right? 14x that's that's again a, a mind-bogglingly large number and annual venture capital investment in ai startups in the united states has gone up six fold in that period right which means you know it's not just big companies it's startups it's you know chip manufacturers everybody's is converging towards this this world where um, where where ai is just going to become um, ubiquitous now what does all of this mean what this means is that we are all starting to rely on ai whether we know it or not in some field of our work right estimates uh, indicate that one in five workers white collar workers who are actually working on some kind of a knowledge based economy one in five people Right? So for every five of you who are attending this session, there's going to be one person who's going to be almost certainly relying on artificial intelligence for one of their critical tasks. That's that's how prevalent this is going to be. Now, what does all that all that mean? Somebody has to do all this work, right? So since 2013, there's been a 4.5 time increase in the growth um, or, or in in the jobs requiring AI skills, right? 4.5x growth. That's Again, I can't think of many other industries, computing or otherwise, that are growing at that kind of a pace right now. Now, I know you've read and heard about all of these, uh, you know, these developments in the industry for quite a while now, but it's important to, you know, to just reflect on, um, on, on the decisions some of you are making, um, whether it's professional, whether it's about the kinds of things you want to learn or the kinds of things you want to do. And, and think about, are you on the right track? And, and every one of these styles on this page indicates that, you know, there's something explosive happening here. We're at a point of inflection, and this is not just normal growth. This is not a um, yeah, a, a normal kind of a trend. This is akin to something uh, like you know the mid '90s and and the adoption of computing and and you know digitalization more broadly, right? Um, the the level of uh, growth, the level of transformation in the industry that we saw. Uh, you know, through the decade, through the decade of the 90s and, and leading into the early 2000s is something, um, I mean, that's the best proxy. That's that's how powerful this kind of a movement is. Right? So um, without overemphasizing this or without getting into hyperbole, I really want to claim the stake and, and basically say that, hey, this is, this is actually going to change not just how people work in companies, not just how companies operate, not just what kind of companies get funded, not just what... Um, kind of work gets done but how every one of us lives that's how important this transformation in the industry is and that's why um, we think it's so pertinent this also explains why everyone is trying to learn ai right and and uh, and it's not just you know a particular area it's not just a, a particular university it's not um, you know a niche right if you look broadly the number of people who have started to enroll across a number of universities globally, um, it's exploded, right? This graph that you see up on screen talks about, well, first, there are two things that are really fascinating here. One is, the, you know, if you just look back to the number of people taking these courses way back in the 1990s, and right? remember I told you this is not a new field. This is this is a new field um, to, in the extent to which it has, it has pervaded normal society and everybody's work but this is not a new field um, in the absolute right way back in the 1990s people were taking courses in artificial intelligence um in the early 2000s uh, you know there was a big spike in artificial intelligence when, when computing power uh, started to increase right and and um, ai course enrollment has only gone up since then and 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 in the last you know 5 to 7 years it's it's exploded but it's not just you know, broad-based AI, it's not academic AI. You know, you'll also start to see a corresponding increase in specifically in machine learning techniques, right? People only wanting to understand how, you know, that 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 computing part I was talking about in that big circle we were looking at. Um, there are people who are only focusing on the machine learning component, right? When we're not looking at perception, we're not looking at robotics as, as a field, we're only talking about, you know, machine learning as, as a more powerful means to crunching numbers, to understanding data, and, and to make predictions. And there's been a huge spike in that same period of time since the, the mid-2000s, um, you know, growing exponentially in terms of enrollments of students trying to learn machine learning. Again, notice this has been going back all the way to the 90s. And so, you know, this again is an old field that has been transformed by, you know, computing, by GPUs, by the access to, um, you know, uh, to a lot of data, uh, to the by the access to cloud computing, and so on. Now, having said all of that, a number of you are probably wondering, so what exactly do people 
you know, we've we've talked about what AI is, but what exactly do people in companies, employers, um, recruiters, what are they they're looking for when when they uh, seek somebody in this field, right? What are the skills they're looking at? Right? Um, now, this is these are some of the statistics from the United States again, but but the reason I use these statistics is because most of the world tends to follow in lockstep with some of these trends. It might be three to five years after what you see here, and if you see a point of inflection here in 2016. 2019 is likely to have that point of inflection in the rest of the world, um, especially in technologically advanced countries like India, but, but I think more broadly as well. Now we're, we're talking about machine learning. Right? Remember, I was talking about the number crunching aspect of it. I was talking about the, um, you know, the synthesis or, or, or making of predictions and, and uh, inferences from a large amount of data. That's machine learning. Now deep learning, uh, which, which is a special use case um, that has started to become Again, pervasive, widely used, um, largely because of the access to cloud computing and, and really high computing power. Um, natural language processing is starting to become increasingly relevant as, as again, we're getting more um, text-based, social media-based, and, and a whole host of language-based information. Computer vision is starting to become relevant again because there's an explosion in the number of images that we store, whether it's again in social media like Instagram or whether we're talking about Facebook or whether we're talking about videos. Right, so there's a whole host of um, computer vision uh, applications. And finally, speech recognition. Right? It, it, it might look like a laggard in, in this kind of a listing, and that's that's because it's not quite as widely used. But if you start thinking about the, the degree to which we are starting to use conversational interfaces, right? whether it's Amazon's Echo and, and corresponding Alexa software, or whether we're talking about Google Home, or whether we're talking about even Siri or, or Google Assistant on our phones, they're starting to become such a dominant part of everybody's interface with with systems and so speech recognition is starting to become a lot more relevant these really are the the skills the that that most of the jobs require right now there are i can sub categorize this right machine learning within it contains about 20 different things you need to know at least at a bare minimum to, to call yourself a functional machine learning person um, the same goes with deep learning. The same goes with, you know, with natural language processing. It's an umbrella. It's a class of problems um, that actually has a whole range of techniques that you would use depending on what specific problem you're trying to solve. But um, but these broadly are the big categories of things you need to know for jobs in this area. And what are the tools you need to know, right? So again, if you notice this graph, this is actually uh, on the x-axis is along a very very narrow time band. We're talking about again explosive growth in um, what you'll see in the purple. There is is a package is a is a library called Scikit-Learn um, that is commonly used natively in Python uh, to start to make inferences to start to use common techniques in in machine learning and and in the deep learning um, area. Uh, you know Google developed and started to use TensorFlow for some of the deep learning applications it was doing. Decided to open source it and and that has completely taken off um, you might even have have watched or read about um, this this Japanese farmer with little or no computing background who you know who built using tens of tensorflow built um, a method to categorize various cucumbers he grows uh, in an effort to maximize his revenues I mean that's how pervasive some of these techniques have become right now what scikit-learn tensorflow you've probably heard of others called keras and theano and, and a bunch of other techniques Right, a, a lot of these talk about, um, you know, all of these have just made life easier. It's not that these things weren't possible, right? So neural networks were available. I've I've used neural networks all the way back in the early 2000s, um, but back then, if you had to build a neural network, you actually wrote, uh, you know, reams and reams of code in C or C++. Um, uh, you know, you basically built all the functions that that were required to do the calculations, and now they're all, you know, a single function call, packaged libraries that you can use. Um, you know, uh, simple interfaces, simple interpretation of a, a, a lot of data, and that's what's changed, right? So what these the development of these tools have actually really, really, um, you know, made a lot of these techniques, uh, made a lot of these um, um, these traits accessible to people. Now I know I've shown you a lot of stats from you know, all around the world. But I do want to emphasize that a lot of this is happening in India too. We might, you know, here in India, we might be a couple of years behind what, you know, some of the trends you're seeing here. But um, but even that lag between 
trends that that typically you know uh, take birth in silicon valley or 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 in research laboratories in the in, in the united states and start to permeate their way and make their way to the rest of the world you know it used to take about a decade or even more to for that propagation to happen it's probably now gone up to the level of being 3 to 5 years right and and i think that part of that has to do with again access to information cloud computing the level to which you know the digital divide i mean the 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 digital access has has brought us closer together but intel intel india um, uh, commissioned this report that that uh, that idc put together and and what they estimated is that you know less than a quarter of indian enterprises are, are looking at ai at the moment but you know even by mid 2019 that number is going to be more like two thirds or more and again I, I keep talking about growing. I'm talking about a trend, but really, I, I mentioned the words inflection point earlier, and I think that's really where we are right? at about this time. Right? If if there was a year um, or, or two years that that people could point to and say this is where um, you know some of these te techniques and technologies really took off, going from being uh, in the hype cycle to or or kind of being in that hype bubble to to becoming pervasive to people starting to find practical applications across every single industry and every single domain i'd say it's about 2018 2019